Morning. It suddenly dawned on me that I've been making videos about buying a second-hand electric vehicle, in particular a LEAF, uh, what to look for when you're buying one, uh, and in particular looking at the battery health and how that affects uh, whether it's a good buy or not. And when I've been talking about that, I've often spoken about LEAF Spy, uh, a program that allows you to connect to your car to find out all sorts of information, but most importantly, the state of health of your battery. At no point have I ever gone into any depth about Leaf Spy and told you how it works, the equipment you need, uh, and what information you can get for it, from it. So that's what I want to do today. I want to go through all the basics of it, show you how, what you need to buy, how you get it set up, and um, the best way of using it. Before we go out to the car and start looking at it and delving deeper, let's look at the equipment and the programs that you need in order to access the computer that's in your car. The first thing you're gonna need is uh, an OBD2, Onboard Diagnostics 2 is what it stands for, uh, and it looks like this. It's a little plug that goes into your car and uh, it feeds the information back to, in this case, uh, my iPhone or iPad, which has got a program on it that makes it work. More about that in a minute. OBD1, uh, I think was superseded in 1996. Uh, historically, you used to have to buy uh, a plug that suited your individual car. So it was very specific. The protocols on it were, would, could only be used on that car. So um, you can imagine garages would have shelves full of these things for all the different cars that they serviced and dealt with. Uh, in 1996, uh, I think it came out of California, they said, enough's enough, let's just have one standard, one protocol, one plug. So all cars and trucks now work off OBD2, so any vehicle you've got from 1996 or built from 1996 onward, this should work in, not just your leaf. So um, it's quite a good little investment. Uh, they're not an awful lot of money, uh, as all things you get what you pay for. Uh, this one came from Amazon. I'll put any links I'll put in the description below so you can follow it through and see what um, where, where they come from. Uh, this particular one actually I have to thank Mark for, uh, the chap that uh, has got the Tesla power walls, the solar panels in his roof that we've spoken to a couple of times. He very kindly donated it to me, which is, um, which is brilliant. Now there's two types of these OBD2s. You can have a Bluetooth one or you can have a Wi-Fi one. Uh, I've never used a Bluetooth one, I've only ever used Wi-Fi, and that came on the advice of uh, several people who have used both and told me uh, not to bother with the Bluetooth. The reason being, very temperamental, it used to drop in and out, uh, and sometimes you couldn't get a connection at all. So um, Wi-Fi, I would recommend on the recommendation of others, is the one to go for. And they're, they're slightly more expensive, but it's, it's not silly money. Uh, so, that is the, uh, the piece of equipment you need to plug into your car to communicate with your iPhone, your Android phone, iPad, tablet, whatever. So uh, that's the first step. The second thing you need is a piece of software that can understand the readings that come from that OBD2. Now, in the case of the Nissan LEAF, it's a piece of software called LEAF Spy. And um, on the uh, Apple platform, um, in the Apple store, you can buy it. Uh, it's £19.99, pence, uh, so it's not particularly cheap. And there is only one option. There used to be a light version. There isn't any more. So for £20, you get the piece of software that reads that information and interprets it into various graphs and um, pieces of information on the screen. We'll go through all that when we get to the car. If you use Android, you have two options. There's uh, the full Leaf Spy version, which is £12, and there's a, a light version, which is free, but you don't get all these servicing diagnostic tools that um, come with the full version. So they're, they're the piece of software. Just go to the, um, the various app stores, play stores, download them onto your phone, tablet, whatever, and um, take it to the car and plug the plug in. And that's where we're gonna go now. So here we are in the car. Hopefully at this point, you have downloaded Leaf Spy onto your phone or tablet or whatever you're using, and you've got your uh, OBD2 all ready to go. So the first thing we need to do before we get stuck into anything is get this plugged into the car. Now, in the Nissan Leaf, I think it's the same for the new one as it is for the old one. Uh, if you look down by your right knee, uh, there's a, a little panel that you can remove. Now this panel has got the two tabs at the top that go in. So if you pull from the bottom, there's two little bits that clip it in. Uh, it's 
a little bit tricky, but once you do it once, you'll be all right. You see the two tabs at the top, that's why you don't pull it from the top, pull it from the bottom. Now behind there, what you should find is uh, a little plug. If you look at your OBD2, uh, you will see it goes in one way and one way only. Just plug it in there. And once it's plugged in, turn the car on. Now what you should see is a little red light on it, uh, just to show that it's connected, there's power going to it and the car is on. Now, don't open leaf spy yet. The first thing you want to do is go to your settings and uh, go to your Wi-Fi settings and connect to the OBD2. So I'm not going to insult your intelligence, just go to your Wi-Fi, find it, uh, tap on it. There's no passwords or anything, there certainly isn't on this one. Um, it'll tell you in the instructions, whatever one you buy if there is. Uh, and that is it then connected to your phone. Um, and then we're ready to go. Okay, so the first time you open Leaf Spy, what you need to do is go to the settings, which you get to by clicking on the three little lines in the top right hand corner, and then the gear wheel. And it comes up with a, a setting screen that you can scroll down through. Uh, set it up as you want. Fahrenheit, Celsius, feet, miles per hour, meters, kilometers, uh, all the other bits and pieces, set it up. The important thing on here is your model year. Make sure you put the right battery size on the right year. That then um, allows it to interpret the data in the correct way. Um, so work down through it. Most of it you don't need to worry about just yet. Um, that's things we'll come on to later. Uh, but uh, what we do need to do is make sure that the um, device where we're using LeafSpy on can connect to that OBD2. So if you scroll down, you'll see system and it says current SSID. In that current SSID is the Wi-Fi that you are linked to. So it should have, in my case, it's got V-Link written in there. Below that, it's got OBD2 adapter SSID. That starts off with nothing in it. If you touch the register current SSID as an OBD2 adapter, which is a gray box on the left-hand side, that will link it in. And then the app will see the connector with the Wi-Fi and it will work. That's the first hurdle that most people trip up on. They don't know where that is and don't realize that you have to connect it. So get that connected. As I say, the other bits and pieces, at certain points you can maybe come back to to um, adjust, just to, um, just to tailor it really to what um, you want to do. But for now, um, we're going to go back into the main screens and we're going to have a look at what we've got there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the far left screen. So um, if you look in the bottom left hand corner, you'll see on mine there's four dots. One's got a, one is solid, the other two are empty. Indicates that we've got four screens to work with. If you just uh, scroll across the screens with your finger or thumb to get to the very first one, uh, it's called uh, battery cells or screen one. Now, on this screen, you will see uh, lots of information at the, the top to begin with. But before um, I start getting into that, on every single page, you'll see in the top right hand corner, a little blue asterisk. If you touch on that asterisk, it basically tells you parts of the screen you can tap on and what it will do to give you more information. So on here, uh, along the top, we see, first of all, battery status. It says um, amp hours, which is 60.82. That obviously reduces as the battery ages. State of health. This is the one that people often quote uh, when they say about how healthy their battery is. They always talk about the SOH or state of health. Mine's 93% at the moment. 361.47 um, volts, uh, serial number of my car, uh, the HX is about the uh, conductance, I believe, of the battery, um, 91.26%. Then it tells you my uh, odometer reads 38,707 miles, which is absolutely spot on to what it says on the dash here. The QC uh, and level one, level twos, uh, relate to charging. Now, QC is quick charges or rapid charges. I've done 106 quick charges and I've done 1,790 level one stroke level two charges. And then we come down to the, the chart itself or the graph. Now when they're red, these, sorry, each one of these lines is basically a cell within your battery pack. When they're red, they're trying to balance. So uh, certainly I've been driving all over the place today. I'm down to 20%, so I've done quite a bit of driving today. So I'm sat here and all my battery um, cells are trying to balance themselves out. Uh, and just above it, you'll see uh, in the sort of 
just below the writing that we spoke about, top of the graph, um, mine's showing 12 MV, 12 millivolts at the moment. That's the difference between the lowest battery cell and the highest battery cell. And obviously it's trying to balance itself out in between. Then at the bottom, uh, it gives us some more information um, about the uh, volts in each one. So uh, minimum, average, maximum. Uh, again, the difference at the moment is dropped to nine uh, millivolts. And then the temperature, there's three readings, 25.5 or 25.4, 25.7, 24.9. That is the three separate sensors within the battery pack in the floor of the, the car. So it tells me that um, it's pretty much balanced evenly, the temperature of the battery throughout. Um, and then at the bottom, we just see in big um, letters, the state of charge is at 28%. So from that screen, if we scroll right one to uh, the, the screen that shows graphs. Now the first graph I'm looking at is titled voltage histogram. Uh, this is basically the voltage difference between, between the cells in the battery pack. And the less the voltage difference, uh, the more efficient and the more charge your battery pack can hold. So mine at the moment is showing a uh, maximum voltage difference of 10 uh, millivolts. Uh, if you then tap on that graph, it will take you to the next one. And it shows you a battery temperature graph, sensors uh, one, two, and four. It says on mine, but basically I've got three sensors in this car. So that tells me the, um, the, the different temperatures. If I tap on it again. Now this takes me to a, a graph that uh, is about charging and the way you use the charge. So you can see the green line, or the, or the green part of the graph shows that it was charged up and then you can see as the charge drops off as it goes away. Um, the uh, red line is the state of charge. The magenta line is the GIDS, something we'll come back to. And uh, the black line is the, the temperature. If we tap it again, this graph shows us uh, quite simply elevation and speed. And you can see the just how they overlay with each other. Um, it, it's just, a, I guess, a nice graph to look at. Uh, it depends what you, uh, information you want to pull from it, I guess. But um, yeah, so that tells you that. Uh, and if we tap it again, gives you efficiency. Uh, for some reason, there's nothing displayed on mine. I don't know whether perhaps I have to have it plugged in all the time uh, in order to, for that to um, populate. But um, some people, the problem with it, this particular plug is you can't put the cover back on for your car to cover it up. So it just it sits there and doesn't look very nice. Some people get a little um, connection lead. So it connects in uh, the lead connects to the car, the lead then tucks itself up away with the OBD2 plugged into it, and then you can put your cover back on. So you, you can have this information all the time. Uh, and then from that, um, we're back to the start again. So let's then go to screen two. This screen titled tables shows your state of charge. Um, and then lots more information about the battery, 4.1 kilowatt hours left, uh, which is 16.47 amp hours, 361.28 volts. And the last drive I used 220 watt hours. Uh, the battery temperature currently is 25.7 degrees Celsius. And the next box shows me how far I've got until my low battery warning comes on. So if I set it, so if you press the miles per kilowatt hour box, it reduces the amount. This is kind of a manual one to 4.2. Uh, and that says in one mile time, uh, I will get a low battery warning. Uh, next one is about your GIDS again. Um, I will come back to that on the summary screen and explain exactly what GIDS are because that, that's another thing that people ask about a lot. Uh, and then it talks about uh, the air conditioning and what it's doing and where it's going. And then we come to the summary screen, which this is where we can tackle these GIDS. Now, state of charge of your battery gives you an indication in percentage between 0 and 100% of how charged your battery is. Obviously, there's some software in the car that won't let it go down to 0% and won't let it go up to 100%. That's to protect the battery. But just for ease of explaining, bear with me here. So my state of charge could be 100% of my battery, but that's 100% of my battery in the condition that it's in. So this is three years old. It's not going to be like it was when it left the, the factory. So I need to know what condition my battery actually is in. And even though it's going up to 100%, it's not actually as good as it used to be. This is where GIDS come in. Now, I believe that a 24 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf, when it left the factory uh, with a full charge, had something like 280 GIDS. 
as that battery degrades, so do the kids. So we can see them falling away. And this is where it becomes really handy if you're looking to buy uh, a used or secondhand Nissan Leaf. This is the important thing that you need to look for to see how healthy the battery is that you're buying. So if we look at mine at the moment, it shows that on where I am at the moment, I've got, um, it's dropped down to 18 miles now, I've got 49 gids, which is 17.4% of the gids available to me at the moment. So from that, if you're a clever person, you can work out how good my battery is on the back of it. Um, and then if you just touch on it, it scrolls through giving you some different information, including, and there's my state of charge, 25.3%. If we go down, you see the battery uh, symbol with some uh, different colored lines inside. It's top one state of charge, middle one's GIDS, uh, and the bottom one, the blue one, is distance to empty. So that gives us a better idea of that. Uh, we can see we've got 3.7 kilowatt hours remaining, 220 watt hours. Uh, on the bottom left, uh, at the moment I'm not moving, uh, it would show me my tire pressures. If I tap on it, uh, it cycles through, it shows me those uh, battery temperatures again, including the outside temperature. Uh, on the right hand side, it shows now I've got no miles left to my low battery warning. Actually, in the middle of me talking, it's come on. Uh, and then we can see um, if I go up and down through here, I can control if my average is 4.3 miles per kilowatt hour, it will tell me how much longer I've got to my low battery warning. That top figure will change. Uh, obviously it doesn't at the moment. Uh, and don't forget that blue asterisk, you touch that and you can see all the bits and pieces you can change and play with uh, if you choose to. Right, so that is the information that you can get from LeafSpy, uh, the different charts that you can get and how you can read and interpret it. Uh, that is the main part of LeafSpy for me, to be able to understand what condition my car's in uh, and how the way I drive it, charge it, look after it actually affects it. The second part of Leaf Spy is around uh, reading the service information that the garage was, would read if they were to plug it in. Now to access that, we need to click on these uh, three little lines on the top right hand corner again. Click on the gear wheel and we're back in our settings screen. Now, if we go down through the settings screen, uh, not too far, you'll see in the green box there, service screen. And I just need to move the little tab to enable it. If I now push done and come out of that, if I scroll right again, I will see this service menu. Now in that service menu, you can read it for yourself. There's lots of uh, different bits and pieces you can do to adjust your car. So starting off top left, uh, door lock and unlock settings, uh, it gives me uh, some options here and it allows me to set up the door locks how I want them to. Uh, I'm happy with how they were when I got them, uh, when I got the car first off, so I'm happy with that. If we then go back to the service menu, uh, top right, headlight settings. We can choose uh, a, to change any of these default settings in here. So auto off delay after all doors closed. Uh, I can choose how many seconds I want for that. Auto, the this is the auto on sensitivity. So uh, you can make that more sensitive or less sensitive depending on the light around you and uh, would appear you can do the same with the uh, windscreen wipers on there. Not something I've played with, but they do annoy me a lot. Uh, so that's that screen there. Touch on the service menu again. Uh, we then come to the interior light settings. And it's the same in all of these. It's just a case of, if you're not happy with the default settings, you can play with them, change them, make them last longer, do different things. It's just a way of accessing the computer effectively within the car. Uh, if we come back out, uh, VSP settings, so uh, it's all about the sounds that the car makes and being able to change them. And, um, you know, this is one of those things you play around with yourself when you find out the, the best way for you um, or the, the way that you like it to sound the best and be set up the best. And at the bottom, uh, register tyre positions. If you're the sort of person that puts um, winter tyres on, then uh, you'll want to re-register the tyres or if you change them around yourself. It's the sort of thing they should do in the garage anyway, but it, it gives you access to that menu. Uh, read ECU versions. I'm not going to go into each individual part of that. If you need to dig into the system that much, I'm guessing you'll probably be wanting to go to a garage. But if you need any of that information, it's there that uh, you can get. Uh, read DTCs, Diagnostic Trouble Codes. Now this is something that is really, really helpful. Uh, 
I've not had any issues with this car, but with previous cars, when that warning light comes up, I've had to go to the garage to get them to plug their diagnostics equipment in, to read the warning code or the, uh, the, the trouble code, and then tell me what the problem is and how they're gonna fix it. Well, you can do that yourself on this one. So if I go onto it, hit read, you can see it checks each of the individual components and they're all okay. So if there was any codes came up, then you can cross-reference those codes and find out what the matter is. And then if you need to clear them, the last one is to clear them. And that would, if you've got any signals left up on your, um, your dashboard, that will clear them off of there. So that really is a look at Leaf Spy without going too deep into it. Obviously there's a lot more, a lot, far more functions that I've spoken about that you can really dig into if you're really interested. But on the whole, that will probably give you a good explanation of what you can do with Leaf Spy. And then from that, you can make a decision whether that's something that's gonna be useful for you or not. Um, I would suggest that if you're looking to buy a secondhand uh, Nissan Leaf, it's really, really useful. So um, hopefully that's um, giving you a really good insight. Uh, if you've got any questions, as always, stick them in the comments. There's so many people that uh, respond to these comments that know probably a lot more than me in most cases, and will really be able to help you out uh, if I can. But for now, hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, remember to like and share. Uh, if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel. And um, don't forget, if you want to support the channel, there's a Patreon link, click on that and pop across and have a look. But for now, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Take care.